Hey there, it's Class Boxed here and today we are going to look at Git squashing. We're going to look at what is Git squashing, why you would want to do it and actually go through a really basic example of performing a Git squash. So what is Git squashing and uh, why would you want to do it? What is the whole point of performing a Git squash? When you work on, say, a branch, and let's just say you happen to be working on something that is going to take you some time, and uh, at the same time, you want to be able to push through commits as to make sure that you can somehow manage your work. Let's just say, as an example, that you're going to implement some something quite big for a given project. You're going to write a lot of code. Ideally, when you're working on your own branch, you want to be able to see the changes that you've been doing yourself. And one way to do that is to effectively commit changes you've made, but in multiple commits. For instance, let's say you want to create a new login page for a website. The first thing you might want to do is actually just create the page and push that as a commit. You may then decide to actually write the logic behind the web page and push that as a separate commit on the same branch. Thirdly, you might want to actually write some more logic code around error handling, around messages, so on. I hope you get what I'm trying to say. There are instances where you want to add something valuable to a project but the thing that you're adding isn't necessarily a small change. It is a relatively large change. And to make things easier for you as someone who's about to push changes, what you want to do or what you may want to do is push your changes on your own local branch, but in small segments so that it makes things a little bit more easier for you to do. If you do such a thing, if you do decide to go down this road of where you push these smaller commits, then you also have another problem. And the other problem is this. At some point, you may have many commits, all effectively doing the same thing as a whole. For instance, let's just say you end up having those three commits. Ultimately, you are delivering one thing. You are basically adding a web page to your project, but you've decided to do it over three commits. If over time someone wants to pinpoint that change in your commit they may not know that this change was done over three commits so what you're effectively doing is almost polluting your git log you're doing one change but you're doing it over three different commits why you did it over three different commits to make your life easier it is a valid thing to do there is no such thing as an invalid thing to do if you decide to break things up in fact you're encouraged to break things up to make things easier to review to manage so on but like i said it poses a problem when you break things up at some point someone will want to look through a history of commits let's just say for some reason that log page now needs to be removed someone will have to go back and remove three different commits now that's a pain that's not something that's straightforward to do especially if you happen to write code that relies on these three commits separately so what can you do about it what can you do to better manage this one thing you can do is squash those three commits into a single commit. When we say squash, we're effectively saying that you are going to combine three different commits into a single commit, i.e. when you do a git log, as opposed to seeing three different commits, you will see one commit which contains the changes from all three commits. The act of combining multiple commits into a single commit is called git squashing. So now that we've talked about what Git squashing is and why you would want to do it, let's actually go ahead and do it. So using an analogy from my previous video where we said that we are going to create branches for multiple reasons. And one of those reasons is to just try things out, to practice. So we're going to do that. I'm going to create another branch for the purpose of learning how to do a Git squash. And once I'm done with it, I'm just going to throw away the branch 
the value I get from this particular thing is I would have learned how to do a get squash. I can see that I only have the one branch. So what I'm going to do is create a new branch and switch to it. And we know that we can do this via git checkout. So git checkout minus b and let's call this squash. Okay. So as you can see, I am now on the squash branch. If I do a quick git log, then I can see that I am up to date with my master branch. So let's go ahead and just create some dummy files. It really doesn't matter. For the purpose of this video, we're going to create um, three text files and we're going to commit them each separately. And then we're going to try and combine the three commits into a single commit. So instead of me opening up my directory and doing it that way, I'll introduce you to something new. We can use the touch command to make new files. So really quickly, what is touch? Touch is effectively a command that allows us to create files. Now, if you've come across something called a make directory, i.e. something that looks like this, this allows us to create a folder. If you use something like this, touch, touch allows us to create an actual file. So in this case, before we do that, if I just do pwd, I can see that this is the current directory I'm in. If I do an ls, I can see that the only thing in the current directory is just a directory called test folder 01. Really quickly, pwd stands for print working directory, ls stands for list. So if we do a touch and then we provide a name, let's just say in this case, we're going to call it uh, 01.txt. If I do an ls again, it's basically created a text file in the current directory. So touch allows you to create files really quickly. Okay, um, let's not bother with the contents of the file. It really doesn't matter. Not for this purpose anyway. So let's go ahead and add that file in. So git add. And let's just say git commit minus m. And let's just say adding in 01. TXT file and let's do a git log so we can see we've added in that file we have successfully committed uh, that text file now let's do the same thing two more times using uh, two other files so we are going to create another text file we're going to add it and we're going to commit that and finally let's do it a final third time great now let's do a git log great so now we can see that we have three different commits each commit containing a file so this contains a file this contains a file and this contains a file all three files are different great so if we go back to our example, let's just assume that these three commits were basically the same thing, but the changes were spread across three different commits. So now what we want to do is actually squash, i.e. combine these three commits into a single commit. So how can we do that? To understand how to do that, we need to quickly revisit a few things. We tried git rebase in a previous video. We know that git rebase allows us to effectively modify the existing branch we're on. What that means is it allows us to make changes to the actual branch. When I say changes, I mean the actual context, the actual file changes in a branch. It allows us to grab things from other branches and combine branches, so on. Git rebase is actually very powerful. At some point, we will really dive into git rebase and see all the amazing things it can allow us to do. For now, we're just going to concentrate on squashing. Git rebase actually takes in what are called options. Um, we have discussed what options are really briefly. In this case, we're going to talk about the interactive option. The interactive option for Git rebase allows us to do multiple things. And one of the really powerful things it allows us to do is effectively merge multiple commits in the same branch into a single commit. 
the act of saying merging multiple commits is the same as saying squashing multiple commits, which is also the same as saying combining multiple commits. To allow us to use this interactive mode, all we do is say minus i. So now what we've said so far is, hey git, I want to rebase my branch. However, I want to rebase using the interactive mode. So now that we've said that, we need to somehow tell git what is the first commit we want to look at and what is the offset commit we want to look at. The offset commit to look at is almost like saying, I want you to look at the starting commit, let's just call it zero for now. And I want you to look at the offset, which is the same as saying up to nth commit. So we can say something like, I want you to look at commits between zero and three, as an example. Before we actually look at that, let's quickly look at the logs. We know that this is the highest log. This is the most recent log that we have. This was the most recent commit. So you can almost call this commit number one, as in this is the first on the list, so one, and this is the second, and this is the third. And we want to combine the top three commits, one, two, three. This is also the head of the commit log, i.e. the first commit. So if we tell git something like, I want you to start looking at the head, which is this, and I want you to look all the way down to the third commit, which is this, then this should help make some sense. So to identify the first commit, we said head, which is the head of the commit. And we can literally say that. We can say head. Then we said that we want to look at the up to commit, i.e. the offset commit, which is, in this case, the third commit in the list. And to tell git, look at the offset, we would do this, tilde, which is the same as saying offset, and then provide the commit we want to look up to, in this case, three. So this now means, hey git, I want to rebase my current branch using the interactive mode and I want you to start at the head of the commit log all the way up to the third commit log and let's hit enter. Great. Assuming you've done that correctly, you'll see something that looks very similar to this. This is basically telling us that these are your three commit logs. So as you can see, these are in fact the logs that we pushed. The easiest way to identify it at this very moment in time is to look at the actual messages. So the first message was adding in 01.txt2 and then 3. What we want to do is basically take two of these commits and merge them into a third commit. And we can do that by simply modifying the first option, in this case pick. Pick means that this is the commit that you actually want to use. This is what you want to push to your ultimate git log. This is going to be effectively what you will see. However, we want to squash multiple commits into the commit that we pick. To identify which commits you want to squash, you literally identify them and write in squash. This now means that we want to squash the third and the second commit into the first commit. This is effectively saying, take commit number two and three and squash them into commit number one. Once we're happy, we can save it. Now, the way this works is this works very similar to Vim. To save, at the moment we are in insert mode, as you can see here. Insert mode is where you can actually type stuff in. To get out of insert mode, hit the escape button. So notice I'm not in insert mode anymore. Then type colon. And as you can see, I have colon and then lowercase x and then the exclamation mark. Hit enter. And this would have now saved your commits and effectively tried to merge the whole thing into one. Assuming that's gone fine, you will see this screen. This is now basically telling you the actual message that will appear in the commit log. So in this instance, it has basically taken the three different messages from each of the commit and placed them into one. It's also important to note that anything that starts with the hash will be completely ignored from your git message. So assuming this was fine, if we pushed it, our git log message would say adding in 01.txt23 and so on. 
it also tells you the files which are actually being committed into this single commit i.e as an act of squashing these three commits into one is telling you the exact files which are affected similarly to saving our last change we can do the same thing here we press escape colon lowercase x exclamation mark and enter so now notice that git is telling us that we have successfully rebased and updated the refs heads and squash in other words it's telling us that the three files you tried to squash have been squashed now let's do a git log if you now see we have actually combined three different commits into a single commit we have successfully combined three different files into a single commit now the value of this might not be instantly clear but let's think about it for a second let's just say I look through all of my logs you know there are a lot in a really big project there's gonna be many many of these not not just one or two there's gonna be you know tons of these it's going to be very difficult to try and find which log does what assuming we left our three commits in their separate state it would have been very difficult for someone to tell which commit does what if you are in a position where you think that it would be difficult for someone to tell or identify three different functionalities or rather the same functionality split across multiple commits squash your commit by squashing your commit you actually make your git log a little bit more easier to understand it still does add some level of noise because as you can see the information presented here is very uh, simple very strict we know exactly what's happened here but over here you see more information more information isn't always good but it is better to have this in a single commit versus three different commits so like we said once we're done with what we want to do we're just going to delete the branch so let's quickly do that I'm going to check out my master and then finally I'm just going to delete the branch and we're back to where we were so by looking at this concept of squashing we have learnt how to squash commits into a single commit we've learnt the advantages and values we gain by doing such an act it's not something that is used to abuse the system or to, to reduce noise or anything like that. It is more to allow someone to group multiple commits which should belong in the same commit into a singular place. At some point we will look at how to completely remove a commit somewhere in the middle. Let's just say here we've got one commit here, another here and another here. There might be a reason to completely delete this but still keep the before and after intact had those three commits been separated out it would have been more difficult to do such a thing anyway I hope you've learned the value of squashing and how to squash if you actually want to read the textual examples of this then visit my site thetestroom.com and search for git squash and all of this will be presented to you in a really nice text format I'll leave a link in the description below which should directly point you to that post. Many thanks for watching, until next time, ciao. Hi guys, it's Glassbox here and I really appreciate you guys watching my video and if you've liked it then give it a thumbs up. If you already haven't, hit the subscribe button below to stay up to date with my latest video releases covering all aspects of technical testing. Also follow me on Twitter and Google, links in the description below. Until next time, ciao.